Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Motherland, Fort Salem. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're picking up with Rael and... Uh, Abigail going through training. Isadora is throwing everything at them that she can to trigger their power, but to no luck. Obviously, uh, Sarah is severely disappointed because she thought this would be a powerful weapon in their battle, their war against the Camarilla. But for now, um, it's just it is what it is. So they're all basically uh, her, Tally, and. Abigail are off to war college and kind of enjoying it. Obviously, Abigail's the one that's kind of more in the know about everything. Um, Tally talks about, like, there's no dreams and stuff like that subsequently with the centipede bites and stuff like that. Uh, we never found out what responses she got because I would assume she had talked to Alder about it and maybe Isadora, but maybe nothing came about it. Maybe it just kind of healed up and naturally just went away given enough time. I don't know. They never really answered like how she handled that, how they handled that. But um, obviously, Rayel was just tired of like the tests and everything. It's just like, oh, like if we're going to discover it, discover it on our own, we don't want to be poked and prodded by Isadora and to be treated like lab rats. But um, Tally's also talking about the fact is that there's kind of whispers amongst like some of the people in war college are like, right, we only got here because your mom pulls strings. It's like, no, like we're just going to show them how, you know, we're going to show them why we're here, how we got to where we are. We obviously like they're they're uh, they meet their company or so or their coven, which I'm like, oh, cool. I, I like that. I mean, that makes sense. Um I like that too because it's like obviously during basics you form a triangle and then obviously like you build that out uh, to have your own essentially coven your squad their leader being um, she's like yeah just call me M interestingly enough there's also um, Grigori played by the actor like obviously just saw him in season 2 of Nancy Drew as Gil just to see him also in this season 2 of this is interesting I was like man that actor is popping up all over the place because like I said prior to that I saw him in like uh, Netflix's show uh, October Faction so it was just it was just interesting um I thought it was really interesting too when it's revealed like oh he's the um was it uh was it Cavalier um I probably remember I always uh yeah I think, yeah, Kevlar, because I was, I'm, I'm about to say, like, I'm getting that and the word Chevalier mixed up sometimes in my head. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting development to be like, oh, yeah, that's him. Because, like, right, uh, Abby did reference him once last season about, like, Libba, like, taking him from her. But it turns out, like, he's actually like, no, me and Libba were actually dating, but that was kind of like a, uh, our secret. So that when the time came, like, I kind of got chosen for you. Libba, you know, you know, I mean, it was more so like she's never one for falling traditions, but also any opportunity she had to kind of like cause you grief. She took it, you know, and they're kind of laughing about it. But he also was at the funeral. So he heard what um, Abigail had to say about Libba. So he was like, I think Libba would have liked what you said. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Like keeping Libba alive through them like that as well. You know, it's like, you know, former uh, former enemies turn for enemies to a certain extent. Um, but I also love Talit because she's just like, oh, like a male witch at war college. He's like, uh, you could just say witch. And she's like, I'm sorry. He's like, just kidding. Wow. She always is serious. And Abby had to be like, yeah, she is. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's Tally, you know? So I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, I kind of immediately get him. I hope it isn't a thing where like Gregory ends up being like a, a dick or something. I, I think he's going to be chill. Hopefully. I mean, it, I feel bad for that actor because like his character in October faction started off kind of a dick, but then he softened up Gil kind of did the same well Gil kind of started off a little dickish softened up and then kind of went back to being kind of a dick eh, well, a huge major dick in my opinion um and Nancy Drew but hopefully he doesn't have that care darkness as well uh, that actor um but it's interesting, like, once again, it's like War College, so it's it's kind of interesting. It reminds me of, like, The Magicians in Harry Potter. I'm going to go with The Magicians because I'm well more versed in The Magicians. I've seen all the, the Magicians. I've not seen or read any of, like, I've, I've read fractions of some of the Harry Potter books, but I've never even watched, like, I've seen maybe one or two movies all the way through. Regardless, it's just the whole, like, notion of, like, going to, like, magic school, essentially. It's always such a fascinating thing to me. Like, their first class, they're learning the mother tongue. It's like, yeah, it's important in its own right because there's certain work you can only do through the mother tongue. He even brings up, like, oh, you notice, like, a deal 
never learned English yet. Listen to him. He speaks perfect English and because he grew up speaking and only knowing the mother tongue. So it's like, don't you think it's interesting that he only speaks? And it's like, right. That's always that interesting thing of like some case, some shows will pick that up about. It's not necessarily magic related, but just like, oh, you just happen to run into this species. Like they'll have some technology that automatically ad adapts what they say to what you. So it makes you wonder. Can he understand perfect English or is it that the mother tongue allows him to hear whatever language translated into what he hears and he can immediately like without even having to think about it automatically his words will come out in the language that that person needs to hear like it creates this unison of like yeah we're all hearing this and understanding the same thing anytime I interact with somebody maybe that's just like how it works but it's like oh that's really interesting um because it seems like Tally could pick up a tiny bit of it. I wonder, is that just like a natural thing? Or is that just like, oh no, that's a byproduct of being connected to um, Sarah. Because Sarah knows the old tongue and every, you know, the mother tongue. Uh, but then there was also the interesting thing of the off uh, canon. That being the magic that is kind of, the, the work that's kind of like, we don't use it. It's not about you learning how to use it. It's learning you so you can recognize it and immediately like resist it. It's kind of like, it's like, oh, could you turn off the radio? She's like, what radiator? Close the box. It's like, yeah, I, I, I like that. It's like, there's some, there's sounds all around all the time. And obviously like what kind of like, once again, the range is so crazy. Once again, that's how the seeds work. And I think it's so interesting. Like you hit a different range and it can have completely different effects. And the same thing for hitting these different ranges in the sound of like, yeah, like hitting this particular sound could cause you to not only hallucinate and see stuff, but it could also control you into doing something because the teacher immediately takes control of all of them and then dumps them in what she later on refers to as a dollhouse. I was like, that's so fascinating. Especially because Tally brings up a really interesting question because she had a dream about Alder and another woman. And I meant to bring this up last episode, but I completely forgot to bring it up. Was the fact is that that in that vision, that memory, that lady was using work that's very similar to how the spree do their thing of like, because she ended up making something explode and it killed people. I think it was like a bottle or something. And that's exactly what the spree do. And she had asked her like, oh, does the army ever use... Um, you know, that off canon stuff. And the teacher was like, no, it's kind of no. The only people who use it are our enemies to spree. And then later on, I'm jumping around a little bit, but Tally ended up finding that picture. She's like, she's talking to Penelope. It's like, do, do you ever see that, that woman there? It's like, oh, she's real. Yeah, they're going through a lot of trouble to hide her. It's like, she, either she's the mother to the spree is the fact that she started that organization or maybe she's one of it, you know, at the very least, one of its founding members. We've met, like, some of the hierarchy. Once again, the ones that were with Rael's mom, like, they died. So that's at least, like, she had said, like, half the hierarchy. So I don't know if, like, that lady in particular is the top, top dog. Or maybe she gave birth to it and she's not around anymore. But the fact is, Sarah's hiding it. Because from the vision that Tally had, it seemed like they were good. Like, I don't know whether it's just a thing of, like, now we're sisters. Just like Abigail, Tally, and Rael are. Or whether they were something more, like, more intimate. But... To be betrayed by someone you cared about so much who believes in, you know, I think that's going to be a, a part of those memories that Tally comes to realize. Like, not because I think Sarah's probably done a really good job of distinguishing, like, because a lot of people will associate the spree with, you know, regular witches because you're all witches anyway. There's that. But I think. Sarah did a lot to like acknowledge like she was like the arm she had nothing to do with the army we have to pretend like she no longer exists because she is a terrorist in our eyes you know she started to spree I wonder how many high ranking people are aware of that like there prob probably are people who are aware like lower ranked people like Tally and them like probably don't know like once again she's probably been scrubbed from history um which I think is so fascinating I'm curious if she has old as Sarah is probably not because we have no idea how old that because, like, I'm trying to look back at um, the biddies that... I think those were biddies with her, not just... I mean, not unless that was their, like, their coven. But those might have been her biddies. Uh, I don't know. Because, obviously, like, her like her biddies eventually die. And she has to replace them over the course of, like, you know, her years of being alive. But I don't know if um, anyone... Like, it'd be interesting if, like, the leader... The top dog of the spree... If she was capable of it, once again, if she is the top dog, she might just be like another, she might be the founder, but she might not be like necessarily like the head of the spear, like, um, 
Sarah is. Because Sarah is definitely the head of the spear with the witches and the army and everything. But who's to say this woman is exactly the same? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But I think that's currently where things stand. I'm like, that's what that is. I'm curious to find out, like, what did, what events led them to deviate so much. Maybe, because let's not forget, the spree are super anti, like, everything associated with, like, the Salem Accord of, like, witches bending to the the will of man and like oh you're fighting our wars and stuff like the spree are super anti that so maybe and it, it seems like that's a thing that we see kind of happening with Rael obviously it happened with her mom where it's just kind of and even in Acacia to a certain extent in this episode it's just kind of like certain aspects of it, the army and everything isn't what you thought it was and now you're being a part of it you just kind of see a different side of that and Sarah maybe that's just what that was but uh but I really like that um, dollhouse situation. Like, the fact is, it was, like, spooky and eerie, too, because it's, like, right, like, you can tell they were halluc- like, all the off cannon stuff was getting to them because they were, like, tripping and, like, seeing stuff that wasn't there. Um, but the fact is, for whatever reason, Tally was able to see uh, the sounds later on and gets confirmed. So it's, like, is that a Sarah thing? But also, like, the show has always shown that, like, her insight is stupid powerful. Like, her, she it seems like she has the most powerful insight of anybody. So I don't know whether being with Sarah, like, amplified that. Because even in season one, she'd be able to see further and more power. Her sight was more powerful than anyone else's. So I think this is just, you know, maybe it's just a situation of... Because I think it is about individual ability. So I think everyone's going to have their unique thing that they're, like, best at. And I think that that's always been Tally's thing. It's, like, her insight, um... Um, I think that's going to be, like, her key factor. But also, like, uh, when they made it to the second room and those dolls came alive and everyone had a fight, I was like, oh, that's creepy as hell. Then Rael and Abigail got taken and Tally turns it off because she figures it goes to the lamp. And it's like, yep, uh, everything automatically inside the dollhouse disappears because it was all an illusion. It's like, yeah, but uh, what was the trigger in the first room? It's like, no, there was no first room. We never let – it's all, we never went anywhere. We've all stayed inside. It's like it, it literally – that's so trippy to think about. It can make you hallucinate like you're literally moving between rooms when in actuality you've been in the same spot the entire time. You're opening an imaginary door into an, an imaginary room, going from one imaginary room to the next. It's like that's crazy. I guess it's because I've been seeing trailers for Escape Room, um, the second Escape Room. Um, it, I think it kind of reminded me of that a little. I mean, that it, I think that's it, the design they were going for was a bit of a, an escape room. But I thought that was so well designed, like trippy. And I, I'm interested to see because that makes this season. There's a lot of like that opens up the uh, potential for like some deadly stuff of like right it, people can, can control you with that, make you see stuff that isn't really there. Like that's some powerful stuff. And like you're just supposed to learn how to all like offset that. I mean, you could fight it as Tally did by just finding the source of the sound and stopping it but man until you do unless you if you don't have tally around and your defenses aren't up like that's and this is just a test like in the real world that's gonna be that's gonna rock some people that's that's powerful we're i mean i don't know why they'd immediately go to this it's literally genjutsu from naruto dude and that can get wild especially getting to like the sukiyomi territory that's when things because like oh these are the higher top tier Genjutsu. So that's, you know, aside, like, if you've never watched Naruto, that means nothing to you, but Genjutsu are just illusions. Like, that's, like, the illusion um, ninja arts in the Naruto universe. So, you know, that a uh, little quick one-on-one for anyone that isn't aware. But I just, I can't believe I didn't immediately go to jump to that comparison. But regardless, it tallies, like, wait, where's uh, Rael and Abigail, and even I was like, what's up with that? Wait, where are they? Um, and they were taken by Isadora, and she's threatening them. I'm like, is this real? Or not? now she's testing them again. Sadly, it turns, well, sadly for Abigail, but, you know, um, Rael, like, a cocoon gets put around her and protects her from, like, the gas that's kind of filling, but it turns out Rael is the only one. It's because in that moment, like, she wanted to protect herself, and it was self-preservation, but also, like, to be fair, her and Abby were touching hands at the, at that time, so um, I guess that like rippling earthquake last episode was just simply Abigail. Like Abigail's strong in her own right, but obviously the mycelium that um, which makes me think of Resident Evil, like mycelium and everything, because um, that's that's not the thing in eight. I don't think it is. I don't. Is that the thing's name? I, I'm, I'm already blanking on it. The thing in Resident Evil well, Village, but 8, I'm trying to think of its name. I don't think it's Mycelium. It's something almost like that. Um, 
But like I figured as much because I like I said they played it at a preview because like also we never and I brought it up last episode too we never got answers to what the hell that was that Rayo touched got it on her finger and we never got an answer to it they were studying it but I guess like other stuff came up and you just never had an opportunity but it and they refer to it as a her because even Sarah's like oh just I get so surprised every time I'm in her presence I was like is that is that actually a person turned into that like I don't know. I, I was wondering, like, maybe, like, someone uh, ancient and powerful manifested into that, or maybe someone, like, turned themselves into a doorway. Like I said, I feel like that has to have something to do with the underworld because of the mushrooms and everything, but I don't know. Because what's interesting, though, is, like, they ended up find, finding the head. I'm assuming it's of one of the, uh, uh, Camarilla, uh, because they had found a body, um, as they were walking last episode, Abigail and Rael, and it turns out, um, it's like, oh, we did this. I don't know if that was just some Joe Schmo or whether that was like one of the Camarilla, but um, obviously they brought back the head. Well, obviously Isadora studying the head, and at one point when M and Rael are talking, it starts mimicking Rael's voice, and it's like, you know, and so in that, uh, Later on, they cut open a brain, and, it, you know, they end up discovering that this has to deal with, like, the mycelium, and Rael, like, Rael's kind of like a bridge between whatever that mycelium thing is, and she kind of acts as kind of a host for it. So, I think it's interesting. She only touched it, so only a fraction of it. So, whatever the mycelium thing is, I'm assuming she's only got a fraction of it, but it's kind of crazy. She's able to do this much with the fraction, but I guess it's it's not more of a percentage thing. It's just kind of like, um, I guess it's more so like she's basically got a parasite, and that parasite psychically connects her to the mycelium so everything that the mycelium can do like it, it when it flexes itself it immediately transfers over so like i don't know what i'm saying is i don't know if if it's that rail is drawing upon all of its powers because she talks about like right it's something i feel like i can't control probably because like you're not summoning fractions of the power you're probably summoning a lot of it all at once you're probably not consistently summoning like oh like this time when it's protecting you it probably used 20 when you and Abby were like ravaging everything in your way, that was probably it flexing at like 70 or 80. Maybe. You, you know what I mean? I don't know how the percentages work out, just like how crazy powerful that thing is. But Rayelle is just kind of a middle ground. Like it just, she's kind of a, a conductor to a certain extent. Uh, but getting back to it, like it is sad. Uh, Abigail ends up finding out like she's not a part of that. And obviously Rayelle describing and everything, Abby's kind of disappointed. And she's like, Are you okay? She's like, I'm just tired. It's like, because in her mind, it's like, right, I feel special, you know? Uh, because being, because I think also being a bellwether, it's one thing, but this, this was something that was all her own. Like, for her, she has to live up to the legacy of being a bellwether, but this is something, she, and what was her mom saying last episode? You might be the greatest bellwether of them all. That was before all that. It was just like, oh my God, you survived and everything. But I think that got to Abby's head because it's like, oh my God, I'm so powerful. Like, I'm an amazing bellwether. But now it's like, oh, I'm kind of back to just being me. I'm kind of normal you know and it's like she's always held the bellwether name to such high extent but now it's like oh i'm bottom of the barrel like when i'm just a regular bellwether i felt this immediately boosted me to like yeah i'm special i'm the top of my family but it's like no i'm like any other member of my family to a certain extent so then there's also the whole her and the deal thing because a deal obviously like they're hitting it off but um kalita is saying she wants to leave and Adele has to decide whether or not he's going to go on this world tour of her or not because she's talking to other leaders from a, a, a different countries when they're having a conversation with Sarah which they've been asking Sarah how did the Camarilla come back she's like I have no idea once again that's such a cagey subject where Sarah still hasn't fully because she brought it up last season where she was like the Camarilla aren't around I destroyed them like 200 years they haven't existed for like 200 years but beyond that it's like even when Abigail and it was like uh, maybe Abigail and Rael asked last episode she didn't give them a straight answer it's like oh you practice on your power and then we'll worry about um, explaining the Camarilla to you but I'm like I don't I don't know I guess it's also that thing too interestingly enough they are such special people that like Alder came to them and was kind of giving them personal messages and then was like yeah if you're going to bring something 
basically the class, you better share it with everybody. You're like, yeah, they think we think this is a moment to kind of uh, be quiet. Because uh, it's like, yeah, you guys are special in your own case. You know, Tally being a biddy, you being a bellwether, and at the time they believed that you were connected to Riel's whole special thing, sadly. You know, it's like, that's got to irk you a little bit. And it, you know that's probably going to be a little bit of insecurity and jealousy for Abigail going forward. Because it's like, once again, it's like, you know... Because especially because she thought this made her like right that much more of an important soldier. It's like she thinks it's important to the cause, but it's also because at that time you thought probably it would bolster you a little bit. So there's a little self-serving in it. But, you know, when you come from such a prestigious family, you have to kind of distinguish yourself from the other members. So I just thought that whole um, situation was really interesting. Uh, but uh, Kalita does visit... Um, Abby and sadly Abby at that time you know had just dealt with the whole like right I'm not special thing and then it's like oh yeah like Adil he'll be staying here while I'm basically going on this world tour and it's like Abby's like happy about it it's like no he'll enjoy himself here because it seemed like him and Gregory apparently for Abby she's like oh, I'm glad you have you're making friends that maybe they'll give you another reason to stay but for Kalita, she kind of dooms the relationship by being like I don't want you hurt because at the end of the day no matter what uh, Adil's always going to pick his people over anyone else, just like you'll always pick your people over anyone else. And it's just kind of like a almost basically seeing that their relationship is kind of doomed because it's just never going to work out, which is like not what she needed to hear at that time. She was already low and Kalita unintentionally and inadvertently kind of kicked her while she was down. So I brought uh, Tally. Uh, I'd, I'd referenced it earlier, but uh, her and Penelope, that's interesting. She's trying to be there for Penelope because obviously word had gotten to him. It's like, right. Well, she's like, because when I was a biddy, uh, when the president was, uh, when uh, the vice president, her dad was talking to uh, Sarah, it's like, I definitely got the feeling like, oh, he doesn't, he's not too fond of this witch stuff. So that's got to be hard. And at the same time, Tally also understands to some extent because it's like, right, her mom wasn't too happy about her taking the oath and everything. So I think it is nice for Tally to be the one kind of tutoring and, you know, looking over uh, Penelope, welcoming her to this world that she knows nothing about. Because a lot of people, yeah, they didn't go into this knowing every aspect of the history, but they know enough because it's like when you grow up with this, like sadly Penelope didn't grow up. And it's like teaching her everything she needs in preparation for basic, you know, so... Another angle to this episode is the whole situation with uh, Rael's mom and uh, Scylla. The whole conversation about, well, first and foremost, it's like, why didn't she ever kind of reach out to Rael? It's like, well, because she brings up when Rael was 10, it's like, I was home a total of 18 days. It's like, because the army wasn't too happy about who I married. And so they kind of used, they kind of put me on a field just to keep us apart, which is like, oh, sad. So there was like a very Romeo and Juliet thing in that regard. I guess at the very least, they always want which, well, I guess he's like a civilian civilian, not like, oh, there's even like some like, male side of the family that has any ma like I don't know like I wonder what about her dad maybe it's because like I don't I was about to say like but there's other people that like I mean we don't know anything about Tally's dad but I'm like what is it about Rael's dad in particular that was kind of a big no-no that it was kind of frowned upon I, I I don't know maybe at that point in time the rules were a little different when they were together uh, I don't know but for her it's like the more time she spent away the angrier she got at, you know, just at the the way of everything, and obviously that anger uh, was more so spent towards, you know, giving it to the spree as, because uh, she's, you know, that the spree found her, you know, you know, like any cult kind of would find you in your most vulnerable state. So that anger she used, uh, she basically fuel, fueled her work with the spree with that anger. And now it's kind of a thing of like, well, what am I going to say to her? Like after all this, I'm like, hey, I'm not dead. I'm alive. Also, I could have come back to you, but I never did. Also, I'm part of the spree. That's a lot to drop on your daughter at once, you know, so. But uh, you have Scylla going to like a vigil and you can tell it's bothering her. And based on what we've seen, it seems like that's her only, that was her first, ex like she was obviously like gathering, it's more so like getting Rael was like her main mission, but that, the moment from episode one, it seems like that was her only like, her first act as being a part of the spree, like she'd already been kind of welcomed a little bit, but that was her first mission, and she hasn't done anything like that. Granted, they even said like, what was it, it was like 
when there like 1600 people that died in that mall in the first episode like she killed a lot of people but that start weighing on her because the because she believed in the mission so much but now like because that humanity has creeped back in that something that was more more than the mission and that was love because she legitimately fell in love with Rayo and Rayo loved her back that was it was mutual and because of that like that humanity starting to creep in where it's like and I think Anacostia's words were kind of getting to because now she's looking around and she's like, oh. Because it's one thing to just kill all those people. It's another to see the ramifications. You're seeing all these grieving families of like, you know what it's like to lose people that you love and care about. You lost Rayo to a certain extent. Not a one for one, but more specifically this uh, fact of like, what happened to your parents? So what what happened to your parents you kind of did to these other people? They, uh... They lost people very important to them. And it's like, these were just innocent people. Like, you know that they weren't bad people, but it's just like, you, the spree needed to make a statement and you're the one responsible for it. And even hearing the speech about, right, it was a monster that did this to us. And in that moment, um, you know, Anacostia gets up and starts talking. I thought what's interesting, though, is you listen to her story. She uses some of the truth, you know, and that's always what makes a convincing lie. Make it keep it as close to the truth as possible because obviously, once you start deviating, you're going to keep up with a lot of details. But you know, if you keep it close enough to the truth, it becomes it, it's not like you have to think about it, it's just second nature. You just skew things a little bit because she talked about her parents being dead, like her parents died. Um, she talked about it vaguely enough to be like, Oh, what happened to him? But it's like, right, they died in a car accident, we know that, but she kept the the talk vague enough that it could just be like oh like it was the spree that killed her you know so but then like you know Scylla's like what are you doing here and she's like kind of like are you here to like like what what was your main motive like wait you're the one that was listening in last episode I was like yes and Acacia was following her she's been following her for weeks but also it's like right I wanted to um she's not here on the the army's orders or anything it's like she's doing this on her own because she believes that there's a different way like she could feels like there's enough of humanity back in Scylla to kind of pull her away from the spree uh but that's before like it she, like she found out what um Scylla's doing it's like oh you're trying to get close to the um uh Camarilla because you believe they're a part of all of this so they meet up with the people that uh Scylla has been buddying buddy up buddying up with um and ends up there at the bar drinking, having fun. I it was immediately weird when the dude was kind of like, she's like, yeah, I get to have ladies, uh, you know, lady more. Oh, this gets to be a this has always been a boys' club, and he's like, oh, really? And she's like, yeah, it was just he he really got all sinister for a moment, almost like like almost like that was an issue. And she's like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and she's like, leaving. You see her expression change. I'm like, that that seems a little. I was about to say, is that an abusive relationship? Because it didn't seem like a. What'd you say? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I cut you off from other women or something like this. She's like, no, 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 I didn't. Like, it just, it, it that scene rubbed me wrong. I was like, that's weird. I was like, not less this whole Camarilla thing. I was like, there's women in it, isn't it? Not less, well, because I was also thinking, like, they might keep women at a distance because it's like, they might make it a mainly male thing because it's like, well, male witches aren't, I mean, it's a thing, obviously, but it's like, it's probably more so like they probably make it more of a boys club because that way they can make sure a witch doesn't infiltrate the group because it's like, yeah, because it, witches are, as we learned last episode, there's work within men, but the the bloodline, um, it, it doesn't get passed on from uh, father to child, only mother to child. So that's why they track magic through um the uh, mother's uh, bloodline. But, like, I was wondering, like, because that's the only room, because it seemed like maybe, like, his significant other might not be in to know about what he's doing, because he made sure to, well, the dude shows up afterwards, but it's like, he just made sure to do some of his business after she left the room. So that's why I'm like, she might not be in to know. Like, it's like, oh, we're gre we're people grieving and stuff like that. So not everyone involved in this is a part of this but maybe they're very particular about who they invite in like so he might be a part of it she might and the same thing for other people like i said that just it feels like it it feels like it might be a thing of it is kind of a boys club thing by design but um obviously you have rael's mom saying um all right work with anacostia but be careful don't forget that she is the army so don't let the lines blur too much you know for now let's keep doing this so we could get closer to the camarilla but do be wary of her so 
A lot of interesting, interesting things went down this episode. I'm really curious to ultimately see where all of it ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.